Cassette 3, Program 10-1A. Slide number 99. In order to make the adjustment of the shift cam overthrow stop, before you attempt to make the adjustment, you will have to remove the shift clutch ratchet and the hand cycle wheel. Otherwise, you will almost certainly damage the screw head or the ratchet for lack of the proper angle to apply the screwdriver. When the shift cam is in its uppercase position or capital character position, and when the ratchet is manually turned top to the rear, the indicated clearance between the outer lug and the tip of the shift clutch latch or release arm should be at least one millimeter. You may have to make the adjustment, then reassemble the clutch and test the result a number of times before you achieve the required clearance. You should, however, always dismantle the clutch before you attempt to change the position of the overthrow stop. With this, we conclude our discussion of the shift clutch. As mentioned, we have to use the same theory of operation again to explain the operation of three more clutches in the Selectric typewriter. Slide number 100. We saw that the motor transmits what we call positive power to the drive or hub pulley via the drive belt and that this torque is transmitted through the direct connection of set screws to the operational shaft located in the right half of the power frame of our typewriter. When we want to check out any Selectric typewriter, this mechanism must be our first concern, since we cannot operate anything on it without, sooner or later, using this power source. Slide number 101. We also saw that the operational shaft is constantly turning for as long as the motor remains switched on. We use clutches in order to tap that power or torque. The shift clutch, located at the extreme right end of the operational shaft, was the first such mechanism. The next clutch from right to left is a ratchet clutch, which operates the cam marked carrier return index cam. Here we have the old story again. This name is obviously meant to describe the function of the cam, and it was chosen by the manufacturer. It is necessary for us to be thoroughly acquainted with the name for the purpose of being able to communicate with the manufacturer's representatives. However, the merit in learning this name of the part stops there. The same cam, for instance, has an additional function on the Selectric 2 typewriter, namely to drive the backspace mechanism. Furthermore, this cam does not really return the carrier, as the name seems to imply. The so-called carrier return index cam is used in order to engage the carrier return mechanism. To make a long story short, beware of attaching too great an importance to the name of a given part. The name may imply more or at times less than what the part really does. Let's have a short discussion on cams. Slide number 102. Consider this drawing of the cam, the cam follower, and the operational latch. A cam is nothing more than a wedge, which wedges itself between the cam follower and the shaft on which the cam is mounted. Because of the fact that the shaft is fixed or stationary, the cam follower has to do the moving. At the point of contact between the cam and the cam follower, we have an oscillation of the cam follower. The amplitude of this oscillation is equal to the distance designated by the capital D sub 1 minus the distance designated by the small d sub 2. At the right extreme of the cam follower, we obtain for all practical purposes a vertical motion designated by M sub V. In spite of the fact that the cam follower has a pivot point and thus rotates, we are only interested in the vertical motion at the right end of the cam follower. 
we use only MV and simply disregard the horizontal component of this motion. We conclude then that the cam and the cam follower is used in order to convert torque or twisting force coming from the operational shaft into linear or vertical force at the right end or the bail of the cam follower. The Selectric typewriter for the most part operates simply by placing hooks or latches under the bail of a cam follower. The latch is then pulled down by the force of MV. Whatever mechanism is attached to the latch is thus made to operate providing that it is adjusted correctly. One final comment. All the cams on the IBM Selectric typewriter depend directly or indirectly upon clutches in order to turn. Thus, whenever we want to perform a function for any operation on a Selectric typewriter, we must select the mechanism and tap or provide the power needed to drive this mechanism. We strongly recommend that you review the text for this slide before continuing. You should also take some time in order to find some of these parts in your machine before continuing. Slide number 103. The next clutch from right to left is another ratchet clutch. The cam which is driven by this clutch is used for the spacebar and backspace mechanisms on the Selectric 1 typewriters and for the spacebar mechanism only on the Selectric 2 typewriters. Slide number 104. The next friction clutch is a very simple clutch called the tabulation governor clutch. When the carrier moves from left to right in a tabulation operation, this spring clutch will restrict the RPM of the tab pinion gear to the RPM of the operational shaft. We will have more about this clutch when we have it out of the machine. Slide number 105. This is the carrier return clutch. It too is a friction spring clutch, but this spring has to be made to collapse, meaning that its internal diameter is larger than that of the arbor when the spring is relaxed. In order to accomplish this, we use a leaf spring clamp on the left end of the clutch spring, black color, and a nylon shoe on the right end of the spring. Take your time to examine the parts of this collapsible clutch in your machine. Slide number 106. The carrier return clutch arbor is mounted freely on the operational shaft without the use of set screws. It receives its torque through a device called torque limiter. The torque limiter is a friction clutch which works in reverse. It is always closed or engaged so that it tries constantly to drive the carrier return arbor. If, however, the carrier should encounter an obstruction on its way from right to left, such as hairpins, bracelets, or other goodies, this torque limiter clutch must yield and slip over the carry return arbor before causing injuries to the operator or damaging the typewriter. The red indicator points at the position of the last of our clutches, called cycle clutch. Actually, the cycle clutch is the print clutch of the Selectric typewriter. Slide number 107. How many clutches are there in the IBM Selectric typewriter? Try making a list of those clutches which you can remember. Feel free to use your machine to count them and stop the tape player while you try to decide. You should have come up with a count of eight clutches. To further examine the clutches located on the operational shaft, we shall remove the operational shaft from the machine. But before we do, we ask you to please take a real good look at the depth of engagement between these gears. The black gear is the carry return pinion, and the white gear is the tabulation cord drum. You 
will be asked to reinstall these gears so that they engage as deeply as possible with each other, but with absolutely no bind when they turn. It is better to allow for a less than ideal depth of engagement just to prevent these gears from developing any kind of bind. Slide number 109. The same is true of the tabulation govern opinion and the tab drum. With a finger, check the play which you have on the pinion gears in order to develop a feel for this adjustment. By now you probably noticed that we occasionally moved certain parts out of the way for better picture taking or viewing. This is a time when you might do the same in order to obtain easier access to the various parts mounted on the operational shaft. Furthermore, while we work on the operational shaft, we would like not to have any interference with our efforts, coming from inadvertent depressing of the character key, for example. Fortunately for us, it is very easy to lock out the character keys simply by turning the on-off switch to the off position. Go ahead and do that now on your machine. Slide number 110. In order to free the print shaft, all we have to do is to take out this keeper. Slide number 111. And out comes the print shaft. You do not need to remove it all the way since we're only going to work on the right side of the machine. At this point, please go ahead and remove the print shaft from your machine. <laughs>